Welcome back everyone, I am Danny Burke and this is a familiar video series now and I'm joined by someone who I think is becoming a bit of a familiar face on this channel. It's Eamon from Top 10 Hindi. She Hello. is here. Hello, glad to be back. I'm very happy to be back. I think this is an urban legend video. We have a lot of urban legend videos on the Hindi channel as well. If you want to check them out, come do it, but this is going to be a good one. Yeah, I'm excited. Make sure you go and check out uh, the link in the description box or the comment section. Well, there's probably one actually over here, somewhere around there. Maybe over here. Go and check it out right after this video. Next Next up on number 10 now, we have the legend of Jura Grando. The story goes that in 1656, a man called Jura Grando was a normal man who died and was buried in the local cemetery. Within a few weeks though, he was being seen in the village, wandering through the streets at night, even knocking on people's doors. Then the people in those houses began to die. This went on for 16 years until the mayor finally decided to do something. He led some men to dig up Juras, believing him to be a vampire, and put a stake through his heart. Each carried a crucifix and torch. When they opened the grave, his body was fresh. A smile was spread across his face. They ran in fear. Eventually, the mayor convinced them to all return. This time, they brought a pastor. The pastor spoke into the open grave, holding a crucifix in his hand, and began to invoke the name of Jesus in order to drive out the devil from beyond the grave. There were tears in the vampire's eyes. The men tried to stab him in the stomach, but it had no effect. In the end, one of them had to behead him with an axe. The vampire then cried out as the entire grave started filling with blood. In the centuries since then, the locals have slept soundly, knowing their vampire is dead, but the legend lives on. Next up at number 9, we have the Stone Nuptial. This one comes from the western part of Medvechnica Mountain. I really hope I pronounced that right, I probably didn't. There are stones there that look almost human and are standing as if they're frozen in some sort of ancient ritual or celebration. Local writers say that there was once a family running a mill under the mountain. The owner was a good man, hardworking and honest, and so too was his son. His wife, however, well, they say she had a bit of an evil heart. One day, the son told them he wanted to marry Anya, the daughter of a poor blind man. His mother was shocked and made it clear that she opposed the marriage, but his father was supportive and they arranged the wedding. They chose to get married there on the mountainside. Pretty, beautiful, you can imagine the scenery. But when the day came, the mother's discontent had grown to rage. As she watched the ceremony, she cursed it, turning everyone there to stone. A bit Medusa-esque. She regretted her actions almost right away, but it was too late. Even to this day, the rocks remain, a reminder to the locals of the fight between love and hate. I feel like this is Croatian Romeo and Juliet, but Medusa version. What do you guys think? Moving on to number eight now, we have Ghost Coast. This is a story of the island of Daska, a tiny place that has been referred to as so haunted, nobody wants to own it. Years ago, authorities kept discovering skeletons on it. Now, according to local reports, at the end of the Second World War, suspected Nazi collapse collaborators were rounded up on the island, including the local priest and mayor. A week later, communist authorities posted a notice in the town explaining that 36 residents had been killed by firing squad. There was no evidence of a trial. Their bodies lay undisturbed on the island for 50 years until being discovered in a mass grave. Investigators found 53 remains in two different locations. These days, residents of the nearby Dubrovnik say that the ghosts of the executed men still haunt the island of Daxa, forever earning it the name of Ghost Coast. At the number 7 spot now, we have Most Haunted. In a small village of Skrinjari lies what some claim is the most haunted house in Croatia. The story goes that there was once a couple living there with their young boy. One day the father went mad and took the woman and the boy behind the barn. He then strangled them in the water well before killing himself. The next family who lived there started building a second and third floor but never got it finished. They fled in terror before completion. The local newspaper reported that they couldn't stand the footsteps anymore. The constant footsteps and always three pairs. Then came the doors banging, then the scrapes on the floor, and then the anguished cries, and then silence. At least until the next night when it would start all over again. This just sounds like it's coming out of a nightmare. Moving on to number 6, we have the Black Queen. She is perhaps the most infamous mythical person in Zagreb. She, for many years, she's been described as a diabolical lady in long black robes. She has deep knowledge of evil magic, the ability to shapeshift, and has been known to make secret pacts with the devil on a number of occasions. She's also also known as a cruel ruler, a witch, a snake, and a fearsome dark apparition who sulks around the city's forests. They say that many years ago she once lived in Medvedgrad Castle. Among her famous stories is the time when the Turks attacked the castle. They say she made a deal with the devil, the only one more familiar with black magic than she was. She said that if he defended her, he could have the castle. When the castle was saved,
believe she found a way to trick the devil out of the deal and so the devil cursed her. Wow, who is smarter than the devil? Apparently this woman right here. Ever since then she's bound to the castle roaming beneath it in the form of a snake, plotting her next move. Coming in number 5 now we have the White Lady of Valpovo. This story comes from the Prandau Norman Castle in Valpovo. It's one of the largest castles in Croatia and has become famous for the legend of the White Lady, the spirit of a girl who has haunted the place since the 19th century. The story goes that a colonel called Cushman was in charge of the Imperial Cavalry Regiment and visited the castle one day. It didn't take long before he started complaining about seeing the ghost of the young girl who had been murdered there hundreds of years before. They say her body was thrown between the ice cellar and the castle city chapel. She was doomed to haunt the castle until her remains were given a proper burial. Now of course most locals thought there was nothing more to this story. It was just something made up to explain the strange noises in the night. Then one day a lot of people's minds changed. Baron Brandau ordered that the area be excavated that the story speaks of and what did they find? The skeleton of a woman, which many people believe belongs to the woman who died all those years before. Perhaps there was some truth to the tales after all. Coming at number 4 now we have The Stalker. This one is actually very modern. It came from a video uploaded to YouTube in July 2016. You may have heard me talking about it before in another video. It's found footage that's said to be filmed by two Croatian teens in the park at night. They quickly realise they are not alone there. <laughs> They try and ignore whoever or whatever is following them, even as things get a lot weirder. Oh, <laughs> Creepy, creepy stuff. The video has now racked up a few million views, and although many say it's a student film, others have begun to spin the video into a new Croatian urban myth. The Night Stalker, the Masked Man, the man who squats. Okay, maybe not, maybe not that last one. Next up at number 3 we have the Witch of Gris. Gritch? Greets? There's gonna be a lot of words I don't know how to pronounce, just bear with me please thank you. This is a tragic story about why witch trials are a bad idea, not that any of you need convincing. In 1743 a woman named Barica was accused of being a witch by a loathsome man named Lax Salage. He accused her of witchcraft and had her arrested. A campaign was launched to free her but only after bribing Lack with money for him to drop the charges. He only got half the money anyway though and threatened to accuse Barica again unless he got the other half. Quite greedy man this man. He then led an investigative team to search for the devil's mark on her body in her own home. He searched all over her naked body but found nothing but still wanted the rest of the money. Two months later she publicly accused him of asking for a bribe and also for inappropriate behaviour. The tragedy comes in the fact that despite her battle Baraka was burnt at the stake that same year. A sad reminder of a darker time. Moving on now to number 2 we have the legend of Veronica. Legend speaks of Count Herman II who had a son called Friedrich. He fell in love with a woman called Veronica. Now Count Herman was displeased but the pair married in secret anyway. When the Count found out he dispatched an army to go and fetch them. Friedrich sent Veronica away to a village while he was captured by the soldiers and imprisoned in the Selgi Tower for 4 years, a narrow 23 meter tall building. Veronica was eventually found too and imprisoned in Veliki Tabor. Herman accused Veronica of being a witch who had cast a spell on his son. A two day trial followed and the judge concluded that she was not to blame, saying that love should never be considered a crime and that Veronica should be released. The Count didn't accept this though and ordered that Veronica be killed instead. A large vat of water was filled in the courtyard of Veliki Tabor and Veronica was drowned. To cover up this horror her body was built into the very wall connecting the tower to the entrance. Ever since then locals have said that Veronica's wails can still be heard, especially on long winter nights along with the howling of the wind. And finally number 1 now we have Brestovac Hospital. At one point this was the most modern hospital for the treatment of disease of the respiratory system in this part of Europe. It was built on the slopes of Medvenica and constructed by Milivoj Desmond. He did it out of love for actress Liruka Sram who suffered from tuberculosis. She died in his arms in that very hospital. He continued to work there until 1968 when it was finally closed due to changes in medicine. Not long 
after, word started to spread around Zagreb that a dark energy could be felt in and around the old hospital. Some even go further and say it's the spirit of Loreka, the actress who died there. It wasn't just her that died there though. The building witnessed the last breaths of countless tuberculosis patients, many of them suffering and spluttering immensely. Some say that although they are gone, their energy lingers on. Well, I have to say I've done many of these, but Croatia has really proven it's up there with some really big countries when it comes to scary stories. Which country comes next in the series? More importantly now though, would you guys like to see more collabs with Eamon? Would you please say yes? I want to read all the comments that say yes. But also this this one's quite good because I feel like a lot of like the urban legends are always like ghost stories or hauntings, mm. but this was like very different. Each each story was quite yeah. different. I really enjoyed With it. Vampires, witches, <laughs> yeah. stone nuptials. Yeah. A lot of angry dads. I think yeah. that was quite a theme. Anyway, guys, make sure you guys go and check out top 10 Hindi where Eamon is at right now if you want to see more of her. Until next time, thanks for watching. As always, my name is Danny Burke, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.